Heaven's California My hair is so hot, I go lower a little bit <laughs> Alright, hey guys, I'm going to be reacting to, uh, I don't know who's, I think this is a Wednesday Entertainment video, forgive me if I'm wrong, because I have like 11 more videos here to do, but I do believe this is a Wednesday Entertainment video, and I, and I don't know about you guys, but I noticed that his videos are getting a bit longer, which is obviously not a bad thing, this one's like 4 minutes, and so not, well, I mean, 4 minutes isn't too bad, like one is like 6, I know like a later one's going to be like 6, almost 7, so that's pretty, pretty good. So this is a sc scary one, I went in the wrong ride and I almost got killed. So before I start this video, I'm actually going to tell you a story that I saw online in, in a city not in mine. There was a girl who went in an Uber or something in like December, like late December, like a few days before Christmas. He ran a bunch of stoplights and like he was going like double the speed limit at times, like almost 100 when it was like 50. He ran a bunch of stop signs and uh, luckily she got home safe and unharmed. And, and the driver like, like refused to stop, didn't care. He even said that, like she even said that she, she, she would report him and stuff and he, he just didn't care. I think he got arrested. Did he get arrested? I think they're like doing like an investigation on it. But the first time that she reported it, like that night, like the emergency Uber number, they were like, oh, sorry, here's $5. That's it? You're like, you're kidding. Like, what? Like, you're kidding, right? Like, I could have died really easily here and, and they're going to give me $5 and say, sorry. That, that That's it? Ridiculous. Anyway, then like when I got in the news, like when a news channel like talk to them about it they were like oh, oh oh my god i'm so sorry and like reimbursed the whole ride and stuff and then it went on from there i don't know what's happening to him i i, I think he got fired which is obviously good i see he should not be working for anybody until he knows what because i don't know if he has like mental issues i don't know but that's pretty scary actually not even have a control you don't know who's driving you you can't really just tell him to stop because then you don't know what to do you don't know if they'll kill you like it's scary so it, it, this is what this one uh, reminded me of except this is the wrong ride that was an actual uber so that's scary though. So I went on the wrong ride and almost got killed. That's really scary. Be careful. Make sure your ride is the right one because if not, you may, like a simple mistake like that, it could be your, a, a, like the death of you. So really scary. This one's four minutes, 10, 10 seconds. Let's get right into it without further ado. <clears throat> this is not about my story, but someone from my church. Okay. And he wanted to share his experience with anyone else. He's a 32-year-old man, and his pseudoname is Mark. He's a fairly big guy, and this situation took place when he was on his way home from work. Okay. He said that he had lost his phone one week before this whole situation happened, so he couldn't call and get any help during the story. It was quite late, around 11 p.m. He had finished work and was walking to a taxi stop location, and when he got there... A few people were standing around, waiting as well. After about two minutes, he noticed that there was a minivan approaching. Usually, minivans are cheaper than taxis, and he felt tired that day, so he decided to take the minivan. Like, is, is it still like a ride? There like was a... a young boy seated in the passenger side next to the driver, who was collecting the fare. Hmm. And then, two other boys, who looked like teenagers, also boarded the minivan and sat in the seats in front of him. Is it like a... Once the minivan took off, after about five minutes, the boy asked if they would like to drink some Coke. The boys accepted and started drinking. Okay. And they also gave it to Mark. Mark was also feeling thirsty, so he took it, but only a sip. Is it drugged? Not much later, he started feeling drowsy. Just before he about laid his head on the seat beside him, he noticed that those two boys were already knocked out. Oh shit, so he's doing it to ev everybody. After he laid wow. his head down, he heard noises coming from the back seats. Oh no. Two people were talking in a different language. The car was passing a big signboard that showed Crest Chicken Farm. And then he finally passed out. When he got up, he found himself inside a big shed-like barn and there were some tools on a big table. Oh my god. He was on the floor, and the other two teenage boys were laying next to him. Still knocked out. He still felt a bit drowsy, but he managed to get himself up as he was looking for an escape. Is he, he saw that the two or? boys were still passed out, so he tried waking them, but they wouldn't budge. Oh shit, sure. are they As Mark alive? was kind of a big man, he tried to see if he could carry one of them, yeah. but it was hard to do because even Mark was having a hard time to stand properly. And then, he heard voices 
He took a peek from the door, and three people were walking toward the big shed, oh, shit, coming from a house on the hill, which was quite close to the shed. Oh my god. Mark panicked and tried to look for another exit. Grab he was looking around the place, and he found one at the end of the shed, luckily. He approached quietly and escaped as fast as he could. I ain't come back for the other boys, though. His was all blurry, but he managed to find a fence door and unlocked it. He heard the people shouting, but he ignored. He just kept on running. Get out of there. When he finally reached his house, it was early morning, around oh, 5 a.m. His wife was up all night waiting for him and ran out the front door as soon as she saw him. Oh, my God. He collapsed and slept for almost the whole day. Wow. When he woke up and finally got a chance to explain to his wife what had transpired that night, he remembered about the other two boys who were still there. Then he contacted the police immediately. He told the police about the road signs I and hope a big okay. for Crest Chicken Farm and <clears throat> other things that he could remember. About two weeks after, there was a police report about how they found two teenage boys' bodies in a lake Fuck. and advised that when they examined the bodies, all their organs were missing. Oh my Mark god. Mark just stood in fear. And as the event was too traumatic for him, Mark had to quit a job for a while. That was a really good, bad story. Like, wow. I, I feel really bad, because, you know, at first, I don't know about you guys, but at first, I, I don't know why, but I thought those, like, kids or boys were, like, part of the plan or something. Because uh, the first boy, they're kind of young, like, 10, 11, 12, I don't know, I can't really, it's, it's animated, I can't really tell, but... And then, the, and then the other ones were teenagers, like maybe 17, 18. So I was kind of like, oh, oh, okay, they're older. But like, I didn't think they were like, you know. So at first, like when they offered it to him, I was like, maybe it was a drug. <clears throat> but then like when I noticed that the other boys were passed out too, I was like, crap. So like, yeah, but that, that, that did look like a taxi though. So like, they're saying it's not a taxi, it's a van. But like, is it a van taxi? Like, you know what I mean? Like, it, it, is it just like a bigger taxi? Like, that's what I would think, or that's what I would just assume, right? I guess it wasn't though, but and I feel really bad for those kids because like he did try saving them too, but he he just couldn't. That's what sucks. Like he tried and that really sucks. Like I, I do feel really bad bad for them just because they they obviously also had their life in front of them and then because of this stupid shit. Like be careful which anything you go into like anything like a a city taxi cab whatever like you feel a lot more safe because they're employed by the city and stuff. Like Uber is just like a company where you can do anything really. Like, it's just crazy how, like, easily, like, I could be an Uber driver, just have a GT in a car. Okay, you're all set, go. Like, you know, it's just... But it's kind of kind of cool, because I'm pretty sure you get to, like, choose your own, own hours. But, like, I would always have a gun. Plus, I would not want people, like, in my back seat. Like, I, I don't have a car myself, but, like, if I had my own car, I would not want people, like, sitting beside me in the back, like, random people that I don't know, you know, like, I don't know what they're going to do back there. I don't know if they're going to shoot me, kill me. I don't know. That's just way too risky. Like, props to all, the, all those people that, like, do that, because I, I would not be able to do that. I would not have them, the guts to. So, credit to you guys, for sure, and girls. But, yeah, the, the, thank you guys for watching. Just make sure you learn from these videos. I definitely will. And, like, keep this all, all this stuff in mind. But, yeah, just be aware of your surroundings. Make sure you get into the right car. If you do go into an Uber or something, then just make sure, please, make sure it's yours. And yeah, if you see anything suspicious or anything, just call the police and, you know, have that figured out. Anyway, guys, thank you guys for watching. Like, I'll subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.